Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is uh, TechFest and the queue and it is a medium level problem. So if I simplify this problem for you, what they have given us is uh, two integers A and B and we have to go through all the numbers from A to B inclusive both of them. Right. Now we have to look at the prime factorization of each of these numbers. So let's say we have the number 12. So the prime factorization of 12 will look like 2 raised to the power 2 times 3 raised to the power 1. Now we have to consider these powers 2 and 1 and we have to add them. Right. So this will be basically the score or the points for a particular number 12. Right. So 12 has 3 points associated with it. Now we have to go through all the numbers from A to B and print the sum of the points of all the numbers in this range A to B. Right. So for example, they have given 9 to 12. So prime factorization of 9 is 3 raised to the power 2. So its points is 2. Right. Now prime factorization of 10 is 2 raised to the power 1 into 5 raised to the power 1. So this is 1 plus 1 again 2. Now we have 11, 11 raised to the power 1. So that is 1 points. So for 12, we have 2 plus 1, 3 points. So we, if we add all of them, we get 8. So this is the whole problem. Right. Now for this particular problem, in order to solve it in this desired time complexity, that is b log b, right, uh, you need to have a little bit understanding of uh, how c works. C of Eratosthenes is a very, very, very like important concept in number theory. And uh, this problem is actually going to use a application of C to solve it in the required time complexity. So let me just first give you a little bit idea. If you have not studied C completely, so I'm just going to give you an idea of what C is. So let's say I have this particular array. Each index is going to denote a particular number. Right. So uh, let's say I have 2 here, then I have 3 here, then I have 4 here, 5 here, 6 here, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right. So I have marked all of these numbers. Each of these index denotes some number. Let's say I initialize all of the value with a value called p. So I am denoting that all of these values are prime. So in C, what I generally do is I go to the first prime number, let's say 2 in this particular case, and for all the multiples of 2, I will mark them as non-prime. So what is the definition of a prime number? A prime number is a number whose only two divisors are 1 and the number n itself. Right. So if there is any number whose divisor is some number other than 1 and the number itself. For example, in this particular case, all the multiples of 4, all the multiples of 2, right? I was talking about 2, so all the multiples of 2. So what am I actually saying is, all the multiples of 2, that means any number 4, 6, 8. Now this number has a divisor 2, which is other than the number and the 1 itself, right? That means this number is, should be non-prime. So I will go and mark all the multiples of this a 2 that is 4 and then 6 and then 8 non prime and then 10 non prime right now i move on to the next prime number that is 3 in this particular case so now again i do the same process i mark all the multiples of 3 as non prime so 6 is already marked 9 should be marked as non prime now i move on to the next pri prime number you see i'm not going to 4 because all the multiples of 4 were also the multiples of 2 right so that means if I try to mark the multiples of 4, then it is of no use because they would have already been marked by 2. Right. So similarly, if I go to the next prime number, it is 5 in this particular case, then I mark 10, which is already marked. So no use, then I move on to 15 and so on. So in this way, what I generally do in C is, let me just write it. What I generally do in C is, so let's say classic C, I go to first prime number mark all of its multiples as non prime and move on to the next prime number right so i keep on doing this until i exhaust the list and uh, or composite let me just write it right now one interesting fact about this particular c is the outer for loop in which I am going through all the prime numbers. So you see there must be a for loop, there must be some for loop. So let me just write it. So there must be some for loop which is traversing 
through the primes, right? So this for loop, let's say it starts from two. It only goes up to square root of the maximum value. I'll tell you in a while why. Right. So you see, this is the outer for loop that I'm talking about. This is my outer for loop. You see, this is the maximum value that I can have. I'm only taking it up to the square root. So if i square is less than or equals to max, that simply implies i is less than or equals to square root of max. Right. So why am I only taking it square root of the maximum value? I have uh, like uh, you can see it as a factual thing that if I have any number x, at least one of its prime divisor will exist till root n, right? So for the number max, I only have to go till root of max to find at least one of its prime divisor. This thing works very well in this particular case because I just need a contradiction type of statement that this number is not prime, right? So I only need one prime numbers to prove that this that any particular number is not prime and to fill out this whole array with correct values right if i talk about the time complexity of this particular sieve classic sieve it is o of uh, i believe n log log n right you can search more on the time complexity on the internet but i believe it is o of log log n and uh, you see that this particular sieve works very very fast to calculate the prime and non non prime numbers Right, we are not going to go into the mathematical derivation. Why is this like this? We are just now going to move towards the actual implementation of sieve, which we are going to use here. So till now, I have tried to give you a basic idea of what sieve is and how does it work. Now I will, uh, although I highly recommend to you to watch some other videos. If this is you studying sieve for the first time, I highly recommend you to watch other videos on YouTube as well, so that you get a better understanding of how sieve works. Now, if you already knew, so this could have been a small revision of what we know about sieve. Now let us talk about what, how are we going to utilize this sieve to our benefit. Right. So let's say I again have an array. Right. Now I again have some values. Now this number, now this particular array, which is also a sieve is not going to store whether a number is prime or not. In this particular array, I am going to store the smallest, smallest divisor of i. So at position i, I am going to store what is the smallest divisor of i. The idea will be very, very similar to sieve. So what I am going to do, let's say I have these values 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. Right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start from 2. Right. So let's say all of these values are initially initialized with some value called max. So right. So I'm assuming that they are initialized with max. Right. Now, when I come to 2, I see that this particular, the value at this particular position is max. Right. So there is max written at this particular position. That simply means that I have found no divisor of this particular number. So that is why I update its smallest divisor at 2. Right. Now I go to all multiples of 2 and I mark their divisor as 2, right? So I am marking the smallest divisor as 2 for all the multiples of 2. Now I come to the next number in which max is written, max is written, max will denote that this particular number has not been a multiple of any numbers till now, right? So this means I need to update its smaller divisor by the number itself that is 3 in this particular case. Now I go to all the multiples of 3 that is 6, 9 and then 12 in this particular case and only update those positions in which 3 is a smaller value. So basically I can take the minimum of both of the values. So I go to 6, I take the minimum of what is already present at 6 and 3, right? So I can take the minimum of these two values. Now let's say uh, in this particular position it is 6, uh, that is 2, so I don't need to change it. I need to change it at this particular position and, and then I don't need to change it here as well, right? So all of the positions I'm updating with the minimum value. Now I come on to the 5 because this is the next position at which max is written, right? So what I'll do is I'll mark five here and for all the multiples of five, I'm going to mark the minimum value. So here it is two, right? It doesn't really matter because I don't need to update it. So basically for all the multiples that I'm going, I'm going to set, let's say this is uh, some value, some vector V. I'm going to update V of I as minimum of V of I, which is already present and the new value that I'm adding, new value, let's say. Right. So I'm going to update it with both of the values. So this is how I can have at each positions 
the smallest divisor of that particular position i right this is what i am trying to achieve now there is a slight difference from the previous case uh, you see how i highlighted on this particular part that is that the outer for loop is only going to go till root n right but that is not going to be the case here i'll tell you a simple reason why in this particular case for example uh, let's say the value of uh, n was 14 only right so what will be the value of root 14 i believe it is uh, going to be 3 point something something right so if we do this our for loop is only going to go up to 3 right and all the prime numbers that is 5 and that is 11 and let's say we only and that is 13 as well right so all of these prime numbers which occur after 3 and have no smaller multiple right no smaller divisor less than equals to 3 they are going to be left empty or they will have the maximum value written in them right so let me just tell you what i am saying again so we use this root method because we know that at least one prime divisor of 14 will exist till root n right when we say this at least one prime divisor will exist till root n that that is uh, by that particular statement we mean if there exists any prime divisor it will exist till root n but for numbers like 13 and numbers like 11 and numbers like 5 there will exist no prime divisor because they are themselves prime right so these positions will be left with the maximum value right and this is not certainly what we want so instead of going till root n here we will go till completely n right so let me just write it so i'm just writing the pseudo code for how this sieve should look like so i'm going to start from 2 let's say my i is going to go till less than equals to the maximum value that i can go right and i'm going to do simple i plus plus right if my let's say v v is my array right if v of i is equal to is equal to max that means this value has not been updated yet so what i'll do i'll update this value as i and i'm going to make a simple for loop again j is equal to i plus i that is i'm going to the next value of j j is less than equals to max and i'm just going to do j plus is equals to i so i am going to all the next multiples of i and at each position i am going to set v of j as minimum of v of j comma i right and uh, let me just close this loops right so this is how you need to fill all the values so you see clearly here we are going till all the way up to the maximum value we are not going to square root of max i already told you the reason why if you only go up to square root of max all of these prime positions will be filled with the maximum value which we initialize the array with right they will never get updated right we certainly don't want it we want at each particular position we have the smallest divisor of that particular index i right now at each particular position we see if this number has not been updated this will usually be the case when the number i is prime right that means it has not been touched by any other smaller number than it this is the only case now we will update v of i as i and going through all the multiples of this particular number i we are going to update v of j as v minimum of v of j comma i right so this is how we can fill this particular sieve and now this particular array v or vector v which we had will contain for each of the indexes i the smallest divisor of i right now we studied about sieve we studied about calculating the smallest divisor for each position i our question is how is it actually useful to us right now if we know for each position x if we know for each number x let's say the smallest divisor of x then we can easily do prime factorization in log n time right i'll tell you why how so let's say i have a number x i have its smallest divisor 2 right so what i'm going to do i'm going to count this particular 2 and divide x by 2 right now uh, i can find the smallest divisor of x by 2 in constant time let's say it is y so I can update now x by 2 as x by 2y. Now I can again find the smallest divisor of this x by 2y in constant time, right? So you see at each time, I only have to spend some time in dividing, right? The number, the total number of operations in dividing will only be considered, right? So this is how you can solve this particular problem. Now the total number of operations or the total number of divisions that you took here will be the total answer of that particular number or the total points taken by that particular number this was all about this particular problem so if you just keep on finding the smallest divisor you will eventually be able to find 2 raised to the power x the answer in 2 raised to the power x into 2 with 3 raised to the power y into 5 raised to the power z in some of these form right because the smallest divisor will either be 2 or be 3 or be 5 for each of these numbers 
right this is how you can solve this particular problem so let me show you my final code and then it will be much clear to you so here actually i have done something which was not actually required so i can try to simplify it but we'll come to it uh, in a while so you can see uh, what i have done is first of all i have created a boolean value computed a vector of integers which i have initialized which is all which is going to store the smallest divisor of each index i i have initialized this max value and i have initialized the size of the array with maximum because 2 raised to the power 5 was the maximum value of b here so i have initialized with some value greater than it and i have also initialized the values with the same number max right now i have initialized this boolean variable computed which is essentially going to store whether my uh, this uh, array or this pre or this pre computation has been done or not right so the thing is geeks in this particular case if you see there are multiple test cases that are being evaluated i certainly don't want this particular part to run uh, across each test case so that is why i created a boolean variable which will store whether my data has been pre-computed or not so when i come here when this particular function is called if my data is not pre-computed i'll call this function to pre-computed right now this data will be calculated and my computer will be set as true right so the next time this function is called this function pre will never get triggered right so this is exactly the same thing since maximum is the size of the array i have to go to less than max and not less than equals to max right i'm starting with two going through all the values and if the val current value is equal to max i update it with i and going through all the multiples i'm updating the jth position as minimum of what is already present there and i right so this is what i've already explained now when i come to this particular path uh i've initialized my answer with zero and i'm going through all the values starting from a till b right i've initialized my current with one so here you see in this particular code what i have tried to do is i have tried to calculate the powers differently for each of those divisors so for two i have calculated uh, two here then i added to my answer then for three i have calculated one and then, I, and then i added to my answer but this is certainly not required what you can actually do is you can get rid of this so let me just, uh, write it again in a much simpler manner which is easy to understand so what we essentially need is what we essentially need is the sum of these powers which is essentially the number of operations right so what i'm going to do while current is greater than one i'm going to find the smallest divisor that is going to be stored in small of current right i update my answer because i need one more operation and it is going to be divided by this particular number right and then i update my current as current divided by equals to divisor so basically i am dividing my current with this particular smallest divisor or if you want to avoid this particular line as well you can just directly write current divided by equals to small of divisor right like this now you see this becomes very very simple the only uh, interesting part about this problem was calculating this smallest uh, uh, vector and now you have in this particular vector the so this should be current as well the smallest divisor of this value current right and at the end when you add all the values of the answer you can just return your answer value so let me let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct so you see pass all the test cases and the solution is correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drops keep coding stay safe bye bye